again, Dr. Bones, talking a little bit about the tennis racket and the stringing. Here we call this the string bed, or a variety of types of strings that you can use, and of course the cross hatching here, the density of string. Just wanted to give you the 411 on tension, string tension, loose versus higher tension, okay? What's the deal with all, with all of that? Looser, all right, here, for example, I'm going to take this couple of different tennis rackets. You can probably hear the pinging. This is a higher tension racket. You can probably hear the pinging, a little bit higher frequency. This is a lower tension racket. You can hear the lower frequency, all right? Which one do you want to use? I don't know. It depends on what you want, really want to do. Power versus control, people kind of put it into two categories. It's not exactly as simple as that, but many of those basic elements are true. So what we're going to do is say looser strings, the ball is going to have a higher post impact velocity. Why is this? Well, the string bed is going to deform when the ball is engaging the string bed, right? So what happens is the ball engages the, the string bed, force is going to do what? The elasticity of the string bed is going to sort of act like a hammock, and then there's going to be a restoring force, all right, sort of like you jump out of the hammock or a slingshot effect or trampoline effect, if you will. So there's going to be a deformation of the string bed. The looser the strings, the bigger the deformation. The higher tension the strings, the less of a deformation. In turn, with the looser bed of strings and more of a deformation of the strings, there's going to be less squashing of the ball. So less of the ball's impact energy is going to be lost through the squashing process, all right? So what happens is, in comes the ball, the string bed deforms, the ball loses less of its impact energy, the strings will basically give back about 90% of their energy, right? So there's a loss of energy in terms of flexing, but give you back about 90% of the energy. The other day we talked about the bouncing ball. When I bounce the ball, the ball loses about 45% of its energy on a simple bounce like this. So in comes the ball, the string bed deforms. There's a so-called dwell time. The longer the dwell time, right, with the looser strings, Ball's going to stay on the racket a little bit longer, which we'll talk about shortly. Maybe a problem if there's some rotation. And you're going to have a more powerful or higher velocity post impact of the ball. All right, so dwell time about six to seven milliseconds. Ball staying longer, but leaving at higher velocity. All right, so more power, but there may be less control if the racket is turning during this point, all right? So some people say, well, I have a problem with this. Okay, you might want to go for a higher tension racket. Or do like we said earlier, change the moment of inertia of the racket. So the harder you hit the ball though, all right, let's go back to the lower tension strings. The harder you hit the ball, all right, the dwell time decreases because these strings are stretching more and more. They're getting stiffer and stiffer, all right? So the dwell time will decrease, all right? Let's go to the higher tension. So higher tension strength. There's a shorter dwell time, all right? The ball is actually leaving quicker than with the looser strings. The velocity is actually lower. All right, so it's not staying on the racket as long, but that doesn't mean its velocity is actually higher. No, in turn, it's really lower. What's happening is ball's losing more of its energy through the squashing. Let's take this sponge ball over here. I've got a sponge ball. You can imagine as this ball hits the racket, it does what? Starts to distort both sides of the ball. This side that I'm pressing on, what happens is this initial side squashes, but by inertia, right, first law, Newton's first law of inertia, bodies in motion tend to stay in motion, will collapse like this. So it's squashing onto the racket, all right, higher tension racket versus the lower tension racket, which will have more of a bending of the string bed. 
I mean, think about it this way. A really high tension racket would basically be like a wooden paddle, right? Who would want to use a wooden paddle for tennis? So in this case, what's happening with the wooden paddle is the ball is losing a lot of its energy and squishing, right? And then it finally exits, but at lower velocity, all right? So not really a, a great idea using a, a wooden paddle. But what is the plus in terms of using a higher tension? Well, think about it. Here's the tennis ball. It comes in, kind of squashes more than with the lower or looser tension. Greater surface area, greater area of contact with the ball and the string bed, right? So people say they feel a better or greater or enhanced control in terms of their shots. And they're probably right, okay? So simple concepts, the 411, higher tension, lower power, but maybe enhanced control, all right? So some simple concepts from the world of physics. See you in the next segment.